Hi, everyone, and welcome to eLearn Chat, where you always learn something new. I'm Rick Zanani, and I'm joined today by Leslie Price, coming to us from just outside London. She's with, which is a party capital where she lives right now, according to what she was telling us. Not a good party. Anyway, uh, she is with www.learnappeal.org.uk, or you can just go to learnappeal.com. That'll redirect you. And... Um, in-house, we've got Harold Muliati running the video switcher, mixer, and trying to figure out why Skype doesn't do what it's supposed to do. Never does. Our guest today, Patty Shank, she's joining us from, you're still around Denver, right? I'm a little bit south now, Colorado Springs south? area. Oh, Colorado Springs. Oh my gosh, you went into yeah. the high altitude. Yep. Wow. Here we go. This show is sponsored by Relay Corporation. Digital learning development, media development, corporate video, management consulting, and more. Visit us at www.relate.com. Thanks. And we are back and in that center position of power. It's Patty Shank. Hi, Patty. How are you? I'm doing really well, Rick. So nice to see you and Leslie. Leslie! <laughs> I know, I know. I was saying just before the show started, Patty is probably one of my very, very, very best friends in the U.S. Patty and I have known each other for a long time, even before I moved to London. When I was living in the Midlands, Patty came to stay with me and I took her over to see the birthplace of William Shakespeare. I loved it. That's interesting. I took her to Stratford on I took her to Stratford on Avon so that she could actually see the birthplace of William Shakespeare. That's neat. Well, you know, Patty is is like the everybody friend. You can't not like Patty. So Um I, I beg to differ. There <laughs> there are plenty of people who don't. <laughs> okay, well in our book you can't not like Patty. So Thank you. Anyway, but so how have you been, Patty? Also, Patty has also been, not, not just to say she visited me in when I was in Loughborough, Patty has also been to my new place here that you've ah. also been to, Rick. <clears throat> yep. So I've actually, I'm actually talking to two people today from the U.S. who've actually visited my house, visited my village, seen where I live. I, and I had lunch in your village with you. And so did yeah. we. Yep. So did Rick. Yeah. Yeah. In I'd fact, like Patty, we missed you face. on that trip. I heard you were on that trip and we missed you. I think you were in the same hotel we were in, but we missed you. Um, that was Very at the, weren't you at Learning Tech last year at and what? stayed at the Aloft? I did. Yeah. I don't know how we missed you. Yeah. I saw Trish Yule. I saw some other people. I saw Carl Cap, but it, it was always at the dining area. And then we miss you totally. I miss Shannon Tipton, who was around. And so, yeah, David yeah, we, Kelly was there. Too. David, I David missed. Kelly I didn't see there. David at all. So, yeah. I don't know how we miss people, but we wound up missing a lot of people. It was kind of crazy. I, I, I didn't even know you were there. I know. See, it's like, and I found out you were there after we left. And they said, Patty was there. She was? Oh, darn. Um, so, anyway, next time I think we all need to coordinate and communicate some way yes, ahead please. of time. Yes. I think yep. part of the problem is it's such a huge, huge event. I don't think that people realize until they visit it how big it actually is. <clears throat> it's pretty it's large. It's massive. Yeah. It's massive. It was massive. I, I have a Fitbit, and um, I got more steps hmm. in London on the three or four days that I was there than I've gotten any time ever since doing heavy duty hiking it was just very <laughs> massive yeah that that excel yeah. center is enormous and you just keep walking and walking but it's nice i really enjoyed it uh, that was my first real trip to london and it was the first time i went to london without being almost arrested so that was really happy with that one <laughs> <laughs> are, are 
you going to explain that? Well, I'll explain it. When, in 1979, I went to the Canary Islands, and then from the Canary Islands, heading back home to L.A., I dropped through England, and it, it was totally fogged in, and we had to go to this Air, Air Force um I guess airport that was or base that was at the southern tip, the exact southern tip of of England. And when I got out, now mind you, I was in my twenties. I was wearing a military parka. It was cold. Military parkas are nice and warm, and you know, army surplus. So I had gotten it there. It was a really nice parka. I was wearing jeans and work boots. Had a beard, and I got pulled over for being a terrorist. <laughs> and. Oh my God. Uh, I got searched top to bottom, and, and thank God I spoke English, because without that, I think I would have been stopped. And then they said, okay, we're sorry, and, and they let me go back with, with regular people. But for, for just that moment, it's because I had an Argentine passport, because I was born in Argentina. It's before I became a citizen, and, and even though I've been here since I was three years old. But it was just one of those interesting moments that my first experience in London was almost arrested. It was like, that was fun. Um, but <laughs> almost, no, but not quite. No, and almost, this is the only time I've quite. been in England since 79. I was only in, in England for one night. That was it last time. So this was fun. I, I loved England. I thought London was really cool and where, where Leslie lived was really pretty out there. And so it was, it was nice. It was a great trip, and the Brits were, were real fun. Plus, you know, you watch TV or you watch whatever, and we were expecting terrorist attacks everywhere. Nothing. It was really nice. Everybody was cool. Yeah. And he had lunch in the same pub. You know the pub I took yes. you to, Patty? He had lunch in that pub. Um, and, and it's, you know, it, Sunday lunch in a proper English pub. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, I thought it was a proper English South African pub. Yes, yes. it was. It's South African. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But it was great. Everybody was so friendly there and everybody just, it was fun. It was a nice place. Yeah. I, I love com coming to the UK and I'm hoping that conferences are, are back on soon so mm. that uh, the next one that comes um, that I can be there. Yeah. Yep. And we love and we love having you. And hopefully, Rick, you'll actually be able to come back over to one. I hope so. One of these days. Right now, with the COVID, uh, we're not going to go anywhere for a while. But we'll see. Yeah. We lost but a lot of money on this one. I would travel right now, um, except that I got two kittens, um, and they require twenty four seven care. Twenty four seven. So I can't travel right now, but hmm. I would. Yeah. Oh, but they are so gorgeous, Patty. Your kittens are just so beautiful. <laughs> they are. I would go get them and put them on camera, but that's a little, little much, I think. <laughs> well, anyway, let's see. <laughs> let's get let's get back to business. Um, Patty, you wanted to talk about asynchronous and synchronous learning interactions. Something you yes. just wrote an article about. Right. So, so um, when all this stuff was going on with with emergency online teaching mm -hmm. the e-learning e-learning industry asked me if i would do a series of articles for them to help people and rather than doing you know here's what you can do right this minute i wanted to do something that would help people figure out how to use our media online media to teach um, and what the range of possibilities are. And so I wrote a series on, on my fourth article now. It should be published any day. The first article was just the difference between asynchronous and synchronous, and that's it right there. Um, and then um, the second article, part two, was on, um, and, and this is the one that most people have been the happiest with, because it explains the benefits and challenges of both asynchronous and synchronous learning hmm. so that you've got some idea when you should be using synchronous and when you should be using asynchronous. Um, and the last two articles, uh, part three is, is specifically on, on asynchronous and part four, which should be out any day, is on synchronous only. And then I'll just wrap it up. But, but people have told like, me pa that Patrick, it's helpful. To interrupt you there, yeah, to interrupt you, there might be people on watching the show who don't actually know 
or understand the difference between synchronous and asynchronous. Well, well so can you it's the A. It's just the A. Explain that. <laughs> apart from yeah, the A. a apart and, from and the A. And anyway, um, <laughs> so no, it's a good point because um, Miriam Nealon and I are, are friendly, and, and she told me that, that when I told her, where should I start? What should I assume people know? And, and she said to me, to not assume that people know the difference between asynchronous and synchronous. So, yeah. so these are terms that, that are used in research and elsewhere to describe two different types, two main types of online technologies. Asynchronous means they're on demand. And so you, you pull them and use them anytime you have the ability to do so. Um, and synchronous means it's live. So right now, the three of us are synchronous with each other because it's live. But the people who are watching this are going to be asynchronous because they're watching something already recorded. Yeah. Does that does that make sense, Leslie? Yeah. 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 Okay. yeah. I just so, think so it's important. Some examples. Because people don't understand. People genuinely don't understand the difference between the two. So people might think, oh, because I'm watching people chatting and I'm seeing it, even though it's recorded, they're thinking that it's synchronous, but it's only synchronous at the time it's happening. Right, <laughs> so, so let me give some examples for people. So let's start with asynchronous. Asynchronous would be, good examples of this would be, um, Recorded video, recorded audio, recorded presentations, which might be audio or video or something else, um, and um, uh, downloaded documents, um, activities that people perform after watching the audio or video. Um, those all things are all asynchronous. People do them at the time and place of their choosing, and that's a really important distinction, time and place of their choosing where synchronous is live and the most common types of synchronous activities are live live meetings and and live webinars or sessions and we're doing that now with each other um but yeah. but um those are the the most common examples of those and what the research shows us and i think this is fascinating is that they have very different things to offer to to the learning process asynchronous and synchronous and so once you realize that synchronous is best for this and asynchronous is best for this then you've got a really good solid game plan for how should you design your courses hmm. so come on then explain explain <laughs> oh okay so so here's, here's in a nutshell, and, and the article part two explains this pretty well. Um, what research says asynchronous is best for is any time you need flexibility and the ability for people to take the time they need to, to process. And deep processing is critical because without deep processing, it just leaves, it, do, it doesn't stick. So, yeah. so if we want people to process, um, we, it's hard to process synchronously because we've got a limited amount of time and everybody has to go at the same speed. Um, whereas at, with asynchronous things like, like downloads, things to read, things to watch, things to listen to, um, they can do it on, on their own time. And if they want to watch it again or, or speed it up, they can. So asynchronous tends to be best for your content, the content you're delivering to people, and let let them do that when they want to see it. Um, and then synchronous is best for social interaction. And social interaction has many reasons why it helps learning. But the biggest one is that, that when, when we get together and talk, people present different insights that you may not have had, and you might not have presented in the content. Um, so, and you can, you can do practice together, you can do, do activities together. And so what the research shows is that the, in most cases, the, 
best case scenario is combining them. Yeah. Now, I realize there are cases where you can't combine them. You don't have the bandwidth. You don't have the tools. You don't whatever. Then you use what you have. Um, unfortunately, right now, most people are doing – most people who are doing emergency online teaching think that the easiest tool to use is synchronous or a, a, a live session. But you can't do five-hour live sessions. People don't it, – it's not like a classroom. It's a special case of classroom instruction, according to research. And so um, – it's not it's not a good use. You can't do everything you want to do in the synchronous classroom. So so you and need also, to have and also Patty, also Patty, it's um doing um synchronous live, people very often assume that it's exactly the same skill set that you need to do what we're doing now as if you were talking in a classroom. And it's right. actually and, and a it's different, it's a different skill set, you know, and our it's, friend and colleague, you know, different. Joel Cook, light bulb Joel, she and Colin Steed, they would both tell you exactly the same thing. It's a different skill set. You cannot make the assumption that anybody who has, even if they spent years and years standing up talking in front of a classroom delivering live training in a classroom you cannot assume that they are going to be able to deliver in a virtual environment Would no you in fact in fact it's a lot more difficult because you don't have yeah. the emotional the visual cues you just don't see a lot of, especially if the webcams aren't enabled people can't really see who they're talking to who the audience is whether their message is getting in or not. So they've got to rely a little bit on intuition, which not everybody has. They've got to rely on technique with their voices, with the way they speak, with the way they engage. And they've got to put enough engagement in the class to make people respond because that's all the feedback they're going to get. So it is difficult. Right. It, it, and the research shows exactly that, that, that it's a special case of classroom Mm -hmm. But it's not like the classroom. <clears throat> no. It's very different. You're, everything is mediated through technology. Um, and there's, there's issues. And it doesn't mean it's bad. It's not bad. But here, here's one of the things that, that the research points to. And I think this is like a major aha for many people. I would imagine for the three of us, it's not. We know this. But, but that, that, um, that teaching, teaching online requires a set of skills that, yeah. you, that, are, that are really have to be fine-tuned um, because yeah. otherwise the virtual classroom is boring as hell. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah. if you're just going to get on and just talk, there's no <laughs> point to – you might as well just record a presentation. Well, how many um, people in have? Fact, in fact, yeah. you should record a presentation if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, and yeah, so so um, the biggest problem with virtual classroom is it's usually done poorly. Um, and I'm lucky I've had I've had uh, Karen Hyder to mm. mentor me through years and years of learning how to use the virtual classroom. So I've gotten really good at it. But it's not the same, and I don't do the same things in the virtual classroom that I do in the classroom when I'm teaching. And I'll, I'll give one tip. If, if you're doing this, you're doing virtual training, and you haven't done it before, get an assistant. And the reason for that is there's a lot of stuff going on that you may not be noticing. In other words, get an assistant to watch the chat. Get an assistant to maybe watch different elements of whatever you're teaching because there may be interactions. They may have hands up. There may be chats going on. There may be a lot of things going on, and you're busy either presenting, reading, or not looking at all the things around you. And so that'll help you if you're new to at least keep up on the interactive part of it because if you miss that, then you've just missed one of the biggest chances at engagement you have. Right. And so and it's so not, and it's not just that. It's not just that. It's also the the way that you use content. So if you're in a classroom, 
you might be using, you know, PowerPoint or you might be drawing on a whiteboard or whatever. You know, you might even be holding up things and passing them round. But, you know, it's also a different, there's a different design skill to the materials that you're using in the virtual environment mm -hmm. than you are in a face-to-face -face environment. And again, yeah. people don't realize that it really is different. Yeah. It, it's super different. So a lot of, so recently I, I taught a multiple choice questions class and for the very first time, I did all of the virtual classroom sessions alone. Mm. And I was terrified because I've always had had uh, Chris Benz or, or Karen Hyder doing all the technical and background, but I've been doing it now for five, six, seven years. And I wanted to know, could I handle it alone? And I was able to handle it alone, um, but I really wasn't capable of doing that until recently where I knew all the things that could go wrong and I knew how to answer technical questions while I was presenting and really it's very very difficult to do alone. I I don't I I I think Rick is absolutely right. Your best bet is to make sure that you have someone who is facilitating all the technical aspects and you do you do the instructing and the inter interactions with people. Yeah, I think it makes your life just easier because there are a lot of little things you've got to pay attention to. And if you're trying to present your content, make it engaging and look at 30 things happening on the screen, something's going to give and it's usually the content. Right, right. So, and so I mean, some of the things I learned from the research is, look, if you're going to do, you shouldn't be showing video in the, in the virtual classroom unless you, you're showing videos so that you can have a discussion about it. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's the technical aspects of showing video in the virtual classroom are difficult. So it makes more sense to make that video asynchronous, have people watch it before, and then get on mm -hmm. and use the time yep. to discuss and, and not waste people's time with all. The, uh, there's another issue, like, People think breakout rooms are great, but the technical aspects of breakout rooms is a nightmare. And you could be using up, let's say you have a 60-minute session, you could be using up uh, 35, 40 minutes of your session just dealing with the issues around the breakout room. So why not yeah. allow people to to discuss um, things together in, in an asynchronous discussion outside and then bring it in and have a discussion with the whole group? Um, and also, and also, the breakout rooms is a key word there. Break, <laughs> they they break sometimes. <laughs> Where would my class go? They're gone. The whole breakout room just broke, and and you can lose people. I, I remember I did a lot of work for about a year with Adobe doing presentations in Adobe Connect, which is a great product. But yeah. every so often, like we get into the room, it's gone. Not not just the present, the whole room's gone. It's like, what happened to our room? It's empty. Oh, no. And we have 10 minutes to live, and, and we're recreating the room in 10 minutes. It's it's a little harried, and, and you just go, uh, sometimes. So there's a lot of other things that can go wrong in a live virtual environment, which is basically tech-related. The Internet is not as stable as we sometimes think it is, especially in today's day and age where you've got Netflix – constantly spewing videos they said the porn industry is spewing more than they ever have and so when you're trying to get some business done you can't get enough bandwidth that can kill you in a live presentation right so so um it, it i've been helping a number of people put put their courses online and it's been a real struggle mm. to help them understand that the basis, the foundation of those courses needs to be asynchronous because we mm -hmm. can't do everything in a virtual classroom that we might want to. We just can't. It's not, it, it, it's just the nature of the beast. But that's a really good idea. What you're saying is have them go through that content first. And then when they come into the classroom, they're already more, they're readier for it they they can talk about it rather than show it you i like that idea that's that's good because 
those are the areas when all of a sudden you have you show a video and you've got 400 people in a room, half of them can't see it, and nobody right. knows why. It's because there's a problem somewhere, some somehow. And so if they do it on their own, then there's a good chance they'll all see it, and then you can discuss it. You can be prepared. You that, can have questions that, that ready. Is actually, yeah, that is actually quite interesting because that takes me back to when I taught in um, what you call community education. Mm -hmm. We call further education <clears throat> here. And before, and I was working with young people who had maybe been told that, you know, they hadn't done so well at school, they were going to be doing things that were far more practical, it wasn't going to be all, you know, doing all exam-based stuff. And one of the things that I always did was gave them loads of information before mm -hmm. they turned up. So it was a vocational course, but, the, you know, I would say at the end of one class, by the time you come to the class next week, this is what I want you to have looked at. And then I would also put up something on the notice board. <laughs> they probably get fed up with me. But I would also put up something on the notice board that would say, remember, when you come to the class tomorrow, this is what we're going to be looking at. It took a while for the young people to get used to it. But once they did, the lessons were actually so much better. Hmm. So maybe there's actually lessons that people can learn from doing the live online stuff that they can actually take back to the classroom. Yeah. No, it, it, you know, one of the discussions that Karen Hyder and I have had recently is how do we get people to do the asynchronous stuff? Because so many people don't think of it as real instruction until you're there. Yeah. And so, yeah. so what, what we've come up with is, I mean, one of the problems is the language we use, right? We call it pre-learning. No, it's not pre-learning. No. It's the beginning of the instruction is here and the live session is here. So Karen said that people, are, that people in, in corporate America are so used to it not being real till there's a live session mm -hmm. So here's, here's what I've come up with, um, and the research supports, have, have, your, have your first session be a live session and everybody gets to know each other, mm. um, so that it becomes real on day one. What about the idea of filming yourself in, in your uh, asynchronous content, just filming yourself so that you can um, make it more real. Since you're the instructor, you're now in the video talking about what they're learning. And then when they come to class, they already know who you are. They've seen it. What do you think of that idea, too? And I like the one you just mentioned as well. Um, it's amazing uh -huh. how you have to get that learner's brain into the right place because you know, a lot of people don't know they're learning. Right. No, I think that makes sense. And, you know, there's people say we shouldn't have talking heads, but the research shows that if the talking head is engaging and, mm -hmm. and knows their subject area and is really passionate, that 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 that, that, ta that talking head happens to be um, very valuable. And, and, so, and another so thing, and right. Patty, and Patty, you've seen this. You've got to make your voice count because that's many times all you have when you're in a virtual session. And how many times have we all been in sessions where the person starts out, oh, hi, and welcome to the class. Uh, my name is so-and-so, and, -so and um, uh, yeah, we're going to learn today about uh, how to do such and such. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's good. And, and you've lost everybody by now. And, and I've, I've been to quite a few of those, and I usually take off after a while. And it's like they're having a self-conversation. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, who are you talking to? <laughs> Is it the voice right. in your head or, or whatever? <laughs> that the drugs aren't holding? No, I mean, What's going on? Um, there's a it's, bunch we can do like that. It, it makes total sense. Um, there, you've, got, you've got to get your passion across 
as the instructor. Now, I realize the, the extreme case of asynchronous is asynchronous courses where there is no social interaction, right? right. And, <clears throat> and, and here's one of the things research says is that those can be really good too, but they leave out an element of social interaction that is very valuable. So what, what I would say for m in most cases, and the research backs this, is go ahead and do your, your completely asynchronous, no interaction courses. And I, when I say no interaction, I mean no social interaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but then do a couple of live sessions you know, maybe before to tell people what they're going to learn and some some tell some stories mm -hmm. about why this is important and all that sort of thing. Combine them. There's yeah. no reason not it's, to. These, yeah, these it's, technologies it's, it's are available. Yeah, it's interesting, Patty, because I know when I've been doing videos for Learn Appeal and I've been down in front of, you know, the team at, uh, at Learning Technologies Group and I've been doing videos and they've given me text to read off. You know, the text is on an auto cue, and I have to read it off. And I've done that. And the, the guys there have said, how do you get the intonation right? How do you mm -hmm. manage to put feeling and expression into something which is only being recorded? How do you know to, you know, use your diction properly? You 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 pronounce things properly. I say, yeah, but I've got a Scottish accent. And they say, yes, but you actually, you know, it's almost like you dot your I's and sound your T's. And no, that, I mean, that in can. itself is also a skill. Yeah. It is a skill. And, you know, it's it's like so many other things when we're teaching people how to do these things, these skills are difficult. They're not going to you're not going to do the world's best job the first time. It's okay. Uh, we all have to go through practice, um, and practice might be li live sessions um, that you're doing for the first time. I, you're not going to get good without the practice, but, you know, it sounds, le le Leslie, like, like you've done this enough that you've practiced it and you know how to do it. And, and, and the key yeah. word there is practice. Practice, 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 because even if you're not in a session, practice. Practice on your own. Go through your presentation. Go through what you're doing. Mock students. In other words, uh, what would you do in this case? You know, so you're talking to make-believe students are there. You're, or you can make-believe you're looking at your list of students and asking them questions. But practice. You, you've got to practice and then listen. record yourself practicing. Listen to your voice. Listen to how you're coming across and that's going to make a big difference. Watch the, um, okay, we've meditated yes. now for 15 <laughs> minutes. Now we need to do something else. You know, drop the ums and the ah, uh, mm, uh, and it's just, because that immediately will kill someone. It's just bad. It's just, and especially if they, and there's a lot of people who really know their content and they can't present it. They don't have the presentation skill. Their voices are awful. They're not engaging. They sound like they're asleep or bored. And that can all be fixed with just a little bit of practice. And, and, and watch people who are good at it. They'll be your mentors. Just by the way they do presentations, you'll be able to learn, how do we do this? Watch someone. Watch someone who's good at it. And then all of a sudden, now you've got something to work from. Because you're right, Patty. If you've never shown anybody how to teach, how to teach virtually, it's a tough lesson to learn on your own. You know, how many classes do you have to turn off before you finally get it? And then can you attract people afterwards if you have turned off so many people? So it's better to practice. Watch people who are really good at it. There's some great people out there who are, who are very good. You've got Patty here. You've got Leslie. You know, they know what they're doing. They've done this for a long time. So once you see them, now you've got images in your brain of, oh, that's how I have to do it. Got it. Uh, but really watch those verbal crutches, you know, and, and we hear people all the time, you know, you know, basically, uh, what are, what are the crutches? Um, 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 you know, and all of that detracts from the learning. 
And and you've got to be careful with that because otherwise you will alienate people so quickly. We're, we're in that internet world right now. If you look at an average time on a website, it's like a minute. That's it. One minute. You've learned everything. We put 50 pages on our website and you spend a whole minute. Wow. Um, and that's the way it is. Everything's short, sweet, and to the point. Uh, will they get a deep message? No. So you got to get a real quick message out to them. Um, Patty, what can you think of times when you've had great sessions and times when you haven't? Oh, of course. Uh, I think that that my worst times were when I was just beginning to be a virtual presenter, hmm. and Car- Karen was mentoring me, but I was. There was so, and you said it. You said it yourself, Rick. There's so much happening on the screen, and yeah. so many of us have shiny object syndrome. <laughs> I, I would get distracted yeah. by by the chat moving by and mm-hmm. somebody putting something else <laughs> ready. You know, getting the poll up or or whatever. I was I was hopelessly distracted, but by doing it over and over, I've just gotten to the point where. Instead of saying, um, and I still say, um, by the way. Oh, we all do. But, but I just stop. If, if I'm, if I'm confused, don't know where I am. I, I, I'll give you a good example. Recently, I was teaching a, a cl- my second live session and my notes were gone. They were mm. not on my desk. They had disappeared. And so at some point I just took my notes I mean, I just took the stuff on my desk and and pushed it out of my way and said, I will go forward without them and didn't allow it. But I took a second where I was making no noise. I wasn't filling dead air and just figured out what I was going to do. It was probably two or three seconds. And it was like, well, you're just going to you're just you know this stuff. So you're just going to go ahead and present. And I did. And it was fine. Yeah, and don't second guess yourself, right? Well, that too. Yeah, I mean, it, it, if if I knew enough to write notes, then I know then I know the topic, right? So well, you know, it, it's funny. I, one time, one time I was in front of a of a prospect. It was a, it was a new client which we got at the time. It was it was the county of Los Angeles, and and one of the people who met us at a trade show said, "I need you to come and talk to my group and explain what e learning is all about." This is quite a while ago about 20 years almost. And so we showed up and and I had an ad-libbed performance. But at one point, I literally just blanked out. I had nothing else to say. So for about literally, I think it was 30 seconds to a minute, I'm looking down, kind of pensive, trying to figure out what the heck am I going to say now? And when all of a sudden that I came back with something else, they had some questions. And then after the meeting, our, our our friend who was who was there said, you know, when you did that pause for dramatic effect, it was incredible. I go, I had no idea what I was doing at the moment. I just totally blanked <laughs> out. And they're going, that was that that clinched it. That's that moment did it. You made everybody think. I was going, I'm so glad because I had no idea where I was that moment. It's like I ran out of stuff to say. And and it was like, what am I gonna say? What am I gonna talk about? So sometimes those pauses can be lucrative. <laughs> Just pure coincidence. Well, yeah. they, I'm still doing those pauses when I forget where I'm at. Yeah. Um, and I just stop for a moment. Yeah. Whereas I use in the past, I would f- fill it in with something. Mm-hmm. And you don't have to. You don't have to. No. And what they say psychologically, the audience has time to digest what you've been saying in that pause. So it actually has a valid purpose, and and I only the only time I ever do it is that for a moment I forget what I was talking about, or I've moved on, or I'm distracted by a question, or something. Hmm. Hmm. But in the, but in the classroom or in the lecture hall, you know, when I've been talking in front of you know a couple of hundred students, mm-hmm. very often when I was talking, I would actually stop and take a breath. Yes. <laughs> and wait and see the reaction. Wait and let what I'd said almost drip through. 
before mm-hmm. then going on. So it's almost like you're giving people the opportunity to reflect on that within their heads before you progress on to the next thing. Because sometimes if it's a complex subject, a complex topic, the person who's standing at the front, who knows everything, all about it, mm-hmm. just goes vroom, <laughs> straight through it. Yeah. And the people who are in the audience then spend their time trying to catch up And that's not what you want when you're giving a lecture in a classroom. So why should it be what you want when you are actually delivering in a virtual environment? That's true. And and I think one of the most unnerving things for anybody who does training, whether it's virtual or or live uh, with people, is when you have an audience that just doesn't respond. Nothing. And you're trying to get something out of them and you don't know if they're catatonic, if they're still there, they've gone into a seizure, what's going on? Nothing. (laughs) And, and for my style, I get, I get, I don't, I don't get upset. I get bored. It's like, okay, this class is going nowhere. And, and I've had classes where I've taught on sound or audio and usually it's very interactive. And one time I had a group that was like, oh my God, they've died. It's awful. And and that was the longest 45 minutes I think I've ever had, trying to fill in space, not knowing if they were alive or dead. Literally, I'm asking questions, nothing. Pointed people, how about you? Uh, nothing. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, and, I mean, and they so happen. that's a really good example of the difference between the classroom and the virtual classroom. In the virtual classroom, you have to be prepared mm-hmm. for, for technical problems. And you have to be prepared for, for, for people saying nothing. Yeah. And you have to have extra content and you have in case they say <laughs> nothing. And you have to ha- you have to know how to take out content in case people are super engaged and want to discuss. Mm-hmm. So it's very, very different. I, you know, when you're doing live training with people, one of the rules of training, and I, I, I say rules, is is you start on time and you end on time mm-hmm. and you cover everything well how do you do that um if you're not just riding over people right yeah. so um this in the virtual classroom you have to be prepared for many things that that you don't encounter in, but, in the regular classroom. but it is also like in a regular classroom it's not unfair to in a in a virtual classroom to say you know what that's a great question let's take it offline after class let's get together or send me an email um and and take it offline because some of those can take you down that rabbit hole where uh oh i don't i only have 20 more minutes left they're leaving and i've got 400 people in a room Uh uh-oh you know you want to make sure that you don't just detract from the class by focusing on the one person that doesn't know where they are which can happen right. sometimes, or, or somebody who's got a great idea, but right. you don't have time. Right, or so, or someone who has a whole bunch of questions mm-hmm. that are related, but it's not what you're talking about, and and that's something we all have to do is to say, look, that's out of scope for what yep. I'm talking about now, but I'd love yep. to talk to you. Um, here's my email, yep. and yeah, you know, these you are do these that. Are things you. Yeah, I used to do that. I used to do that all the time in in a lecture theater mm-hmm. with 200 odd students. Um, I, I did it on a regular basis. But the, the funniest one was when the students had had enough of me. There was one guy in, in, my, in one of my last years of teaching. There was one guy who was a blind student and he had a dog, a guide dog that used to come with him into the lecture hall and the guide dog had its seat pride of place in the lecture hall and if the students got fed up they used to tell the doggy to go up and roll on its back (laughs) in front of me so that i would so that it would get its tummy tickled and at that point i would say okay right i appreciate Let's change the subject. <laughs> and then there would be snap of fingers and the dog would go back and sit on its That's seat. That's funny. 
<laughs> His name was that, Bomber. He was great. beautiful. <laughs> that's funny. That's well, we are, believe it or not, not out of time. We're late already. <laughs> anyway, it's always a pleasure. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I knew we weren't going to be on time today. When Patty shows up, we like to talk. So, um, <laughs> Patty, we got to have you on more often. It's been too, too, too long. So, you know. Anytime. You know, it's Pat, Patty, know. Patty and Leslie together are not a good combination. <laughs> no. no, it was Patty fun, and I think time. that I think we talked about a lot of good things that that are important. And and right now, with what's going on with everybody being in you know self imprisonment, you know, you got to develop those skill sets to be able to talk, and they make a difference. I, I noticed one technique today. I was in a meeting this morning. I wasn't running the meeting. I was just observing. But the person running the meeting would ask, are there any questions? And nobody answered. She goes, awesome. Let's move on. <laughs> and I was going, that's good. That's good. Making something positive out of somebody who's getting no response or feedback. Awesome. That was great. Let's move on to the next section. And, <laughs> and it was classic. And I loved it. I go, you know, that's a good approach because there's nothing. There's no feedback coming back whatsoever. So she goes, great. Awesome. You guys are great. Let's move on. And they're probably sitting going, what, what do we say? What do we do? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, good technique. Anyway, well, thank you, Patty, for, for coming on the show. We always appreciate Lovely. you. And uh, those articles, are they on your website or are you publishing them somewhere else? They're on e-learning industry. I sent e them to industry. Harold so he can put them in the show notes. Oh, great. Yeah, they are in one, the... One more this week. Okay, perfect. Actually, if you could send that to us, the link afterwards, we'll put we'll up that in the show notes as well, so you have the whole thing. They're already there, and they're, they are in the um, uh, description for this live show, so if you're watching, you can check the description and go check them out. That sounds great. Well, if you're watching the show, please give us a thumbs up or subscribe or whatever you feel like doing. You can give us a thumbs down if you want. Uh, but anyway, we look forward to seeing you <laughs> next week on eLearn Chat. Again, thanks, Patty, and Leslie, as always, a bye -bye. pleasure. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye-bye, everyone.